two years is a long time. For over 27 months now, we have been cycling around the world, making our way through Europe, North and South America, across Australia and beyond. We have crossed deserts, endured freezing cold and baking hot temperatures, and cycled some of the world's highest roads. We have experienced so much the past two years that it has become impossible to recall every encounter and every moment. And it's so easy to forget how everything started all those months ago in the Austrian Alps. In this film, we look back at the beginning of our world bike tour, when we were still traveling with two guitars and pedaling the first kilometers on our epic journey. So join us on our very first adventure as we cycle along the stunning Croatian coast, through the Balkans and down to Turkey. So we just spent the first night mm -hmm. on a world bicycle trip in a tent and I slept really good but Luisa didn't sleep that well. No. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, the thing is it's really really cozy in here and it was the whole night because it was raining like crazy. Not like crazy, but it was raining quite a bit. And maybe you can hear it, but it's still raining now. So now pack, and it's meant to rain the whole day. So now packing up the wet tent and everything is going to be a bit annoying, I think. Yes. Especially because we have to set up a wet tent again tonight. Probably pack it in the rain again tomorrow, and then yeah. But I think a tough start. Mm will make it a lot nicer for us than when the rain stops. We'll see. Okay. The excitement of those first few days on the road is something we can still vividly recall, even today. For a long time, it felt unreal that we had really said farewell to our old lives, our jobs, our apartments and our friends and family to cycle around the world. For the first time in our lives, we left all our comforts and familiar surroundings behind, without knowing what might happen tomorrow or even where we would sleep tonight. We're searching for a camping spot right now and it's actually not so easy because uh, it's a big street and uh, yeah, mountains to the left and to the right. So, is there something? Maybe we found something. Let's check. Okay, we found a spot. Um, yeah, right now we're um, just drying the tent or hoping it gets dry because um, yeah, when we woke up this morning, it still rained. Keep working with a nice view. The very beginning of our journey saw us cycling primarily along the Enns and Moorbike paths in Austria, through the central eastern Alps. 
Austria provides cyclists with an extensive network of long-distance cycle paths throughout the country, with the Enns and Moor bike paths alone spanning over 700 kilometers. This fantastic cycling infrastructure made our first days of riding a breeze and gave us the perfect opportunity to get used to many hours in the saddle and life on the road. now where we cooked and now we have the I think last five kilometers in Austria ahead of us and then we cross our first border to Slovenia so we just crossed the border to Slovenia and it just feels really crazy to cycle into a country to know that we yeah, cycled through Austria and now reached our first different country <laughs> um, yeah only by bike it's really awesome though we will only stay in Slovenia for one day and uh, we're planning to go to Croatia tomorrow already. Wow. So Slovenia is welcoming us with a massive hill. <laughs> it's a massive, but it's just steep. So all the trucks are standing in line, or trucks and cars are standing in line for the border to Croatia. And we hope we can actually use this uh, crossing because it's mainly, I think, for... Well, there's a motorway to the left there, but I think we can also get through. So Luisa is just uh, asking one of the border control agents uh, if we're allowed to cross here because apparently it's only for motorway yeah okay it looks like we're not making it to Croatia today because um, yeah we were just right at the border and um, I asked the policeman if there was any possibility to go over the border with a bike and he said he was thinking about it and thinking and said no it's a highway it's uh, not possible with a bike uh, yeah so we have to take another one and uh, we won't reach it today but we're not in that much of a hurry I can't talk <laughs> So we thought we'd take the shortcut from the one border crossing which we couldn't get over to the other one where we think we can cross into Croatia. But the shortcut is so steep, it's just impossible to cycle. Even slaloming doesn't work anymore.
so uh, we did most of the climbing um, of the unplanned climbing and uh, we found a really nice spot to camp uh, we just asked a farmer here uh, for a spot to camp and she just offered her garden <laughs> which is really awesome and it's so nice here Despite an unplanned extra night in Slovenia, we soon had our second border crossing behind us already and we're very excited to be in Croatia. However, looking back now, we don't really understand why we didn't spend more time in the country. Perhaps because we had both visited Slovenia previously or because we had our sights set too much on the coast. As the routes we took slowly got more adventurous, they also brought us deeper into the rural areas of northern Croatia. There, for the first time, we were really able to settle into our wild camping routine. Cycling through the Velebit Nature Park today, uh, up to 1,300 meters, and from there we should see the coast for the first time. Yeah, and it's 6:30 because we thought we should start early when we're climbing that much. Actually, started already with the climb um, because otherwise it gets way too hot. the route through this national park today and we already did like 800 meters of climbing on a paved road though <laughs> and now we have another like 100 to go but gravel and we have around 40 kilometers of gravel to do uh, and uh, we've done like five so far <laughs> So this is probably the biggest moment of our trip so far, but we've made it to the Coast. sea. Okay. Oh, okay. That was weird. Well, that's the way it is. Now. Look at that! We did it! We did it! Having started our trip in the Austrian Alps, reaching the Croatian coast on the Adriatic Sea was by far the biggest milestone we had had up to that point. And until today, it still remains one of our most memorable moments on our whole journey. At this point, we had cycled just over 1,000 kilometers and could not yet imagine how many more incredible experiences were to come.
Croatia, famous for its crystal clear water, pristine coastline and over 1,200 islands, is a popular tourist destination for many Europeans. As we cycled there in July and August 2021, in the middle of the high season, the main coastal highway was very busy. So we did our best to avoid it by riding on back roads or taking ferries to the different islands. As of January 2023, Croatia is now part of the Schengen area and the Eurozone, 10 years after joining the European Union. I hope you saw the 9% sign, because it's going up uh, 9% and it's 37 degrees in the shade and we're obviously not in the shade and this whole landscape just looks like Mars it's so surreal we're on the island of Pug now by the way in case I didn't mention it it's so crazy <sighs> done oh After crossing the island of Pug, we return to the mainland to follow the coast further south and explore some of Croatia's beautiful old towns. Having carried our guitars all this way, this was now the perfect setting for some street music. So last night we spent here on the side of a little road. Um, usually we try to avoid like sleeping so close to an actual road, but we couldn't find anything else. We're pretty like the coast is right there. We're really close to the coast. And it was just, uh, we saw that like thunderstorms were like to be expected this morning. Uh, and it was just so windy last night, and in the night especially, like insanely windy. Uh, so we had to just take this spot as well, because it's a bit more sheltered. Um, but now it's not raining or anything, but it's like super cloudy. So now that we've uh, packed up the tent and everything else dry, we're kind of just praying for rain because it's so, so humid and so hot. 26 degrees at 5 minutes to 6 in the morning. Storm is coming! It's uh, getting pretty dark back there and it's thundering pretty loud. So, uh... <laughs> Yeah, we really think need to find some place to shelter for a little bit. Uh-oh. So it's getting darker and darker and we don't think we're going to be able to outrun this. So we uh, found some shelter at this wood, uh, brick bus stop, which is also pretty good. Better than some metal thing. Yeah. Well, it is pouring now. We're so happy you're here. <laughs> oh my god. So, sun's out and we're cycling behind the thunderstorm now. It's definitely better being behind it than in front of it. <laughs> After cycling quite a lot uh, last week and the week before really all the way from Austria to the coast in Croatia um, we are taking it really really slow this week um, 
and just really taking it easy, enjoying the being on the coast, swimming every day and so on. Um, we still do like 50 to 60 kilometers every day, but just really, really chilled. Take long lunch breaks and it's really nice. And uh, yeah, it's just so beautiful here. We're just trying to find a camping spot for the night and we have this amazing view. After two weeks of cycling down the coast to Split, we took a ferry to the island of Korchula in the south of the country. This turned out to be a great decision, as the island was not only very empty, but also incredibly beautiful. here there are so few cars and um, now we're just next to the sea there are really nice coves awesome so this is the main road to the village Babina and it has like maybe 30% <laughs> He's like it. 20, 20. Over 20. Over 20, yeah. We don't want to break our brakes, <laughs> so we're pushing. I think this we're gonna do with some momentum. Three, two, one. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Oh my god, that's steep, oh my god. You can do it. So that's going to be our uh, camping spot for the night because there's like no one here and uh, yeah it's just no dirt path on the coast and the island is completely empty anyway and yeah we just think we're not going to have any problems sleeping there yeah, right next to the coast I mean we can't go down but we've already been to the coast into the water but yeah really cool. Leaving Korchula again and heading back over to the mainland, we soon reached the border to one of the world's youngest internationally recognized countries, Montenegro. Literally meaning Black Mountain, this culturally rich country only gained its independence after a referendum in 2006. And despite being neither in the European Union nor in the Eurozone, it uses the Euro as its de facto domestic currency. As Montenegro is one of the smallest countries in Europe, it didn't take us long to cycle through it. But we did have quite the adventure awaiting us there. having our first Burex in Montenegro now and they're awesome. The best one so far. At the bar 
border there was a sign saying Montenegro, sea and heights. <laughs> and if you see this, then you understand why. <laughs> so after taking the day pretty slowly with planning our route in the cafe and the border crossing and drying our tent, um, we have to still cycle quite a bit now. It's 5.30 almost and also do some climbing because we um, got a couch surfer in Podgorica tomorrow uh, and we want to get there on time but um, yeah that means we have to go over a pass that's over a thousand meters and we're at sea level now obviously um, so yeah it's gonna be quite a lot of climbing today and tomorrow morning um, that's where we gotta go up over that big freaking mountain. <laughs> so the climb has started, the shirts have come off, and that's where we gotta go over that and maybe even higher. We don't know yet what's behind it. <laughs> Yoo yeah, yeah, I trust. Look at that. Amazing. So it's getting a bit difficult to find a place to sleep because it's just vertical faces on the left and to the right of the road. But uh, yeah, we're still looking and it's getting a bit dark. This is what it's looking like at the moment. Ja, drehen wir um. I think I'm going to turn around because we had a spot a bit further back, which would have might be all right if we can get our bikes up the snow hill. But I think it's the best we can find tonight. So we found a little spot to put up the tent and it's just like here the bikes it's like just up from the road which is down there you probably can't see it anymore and uh, we're just gonna put up the tent like next to this tree here yeah it's all pretty uh, pretty dark already <laughs> We are climbing hairpin turn number 11 and there are 25 of them so still a few to go but they're not too steep so it's okay and I think once we're up there the view will totally make it worth it because it's already amazing There comes number 12. So we're almost at 750 meters now. Um, and it's starting to get a bit exhausting because it's just quite long now. Uh, and the sun is coming out. Well, not yet, but probably in a few minutes because we can see it climbing or the line going down, the shade line going down 
on the trees ahead of us. Yeah, so I think once the sun hits us, it's gonna be really hot. <laughs> Last one begins number twenty five. <laughs> Two months into our journey, it was soon time to enter our fifth country already. Albania welcomed us with friendly people and good coffee. And for the first time, we really felt like we had come a long way from the places and the cultures we knew. So far, we are really positively surprised by the streets in Albania because what we heard and read was that there were only the, the main roads uh, paved and rest of it was gravel but at the moment we're obviously not cycling on the main road and it's perfectly paved it's completely new so really nice to cycle here So we're driving down to the coast, well we're essentially at the coast now, but now we're really reaching the, the coast and uh, we already saw kind of that um, it was super busy, like so many people at the beach and we thought like, oh we'll drive somewhere where there's not so many people, a bit out of the town and so, but it's so full, holy crap. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna find anything that's empty, this is insane. for a camping spot and sunset is maybe 40 minutes away so we're probably gonna cook in the darkness but we're so hungry not cooking is not an option leaving again there are too many ants and it's actually not that perfect next time we check the ground before we push the bikes up best spot there are so many mosquitoes we expected that because there's water and there's water there's so many and we already used some anti-mosquito spray and I don't know if it really works because they're all around me oh, and everything itches already after initially riding along the coast of northern Albania we soon headed inland to the capital, Tirana, and then onward into the mountains towards the famous Orid Lake. At this point, we had cycled over 2,000 kilometers already and had adapted well to traveling by bike.
much happier with our cooking and probably camping spot than yesterday. It's just the side of this field and yeah, it's a small path, but I don't think anybody gets here because it ends there. Mm -hmm. With a depth of almost 300 meters, the Orit Lake is not only the deepest lake in the Balkans, but thereby also one of the deepest in all of Europe. The 350 square kilometer lake is situated in the east of the country and forms part of the border between Albania and North Macedonia. The over 700,000 historic bunkers scattered throughout Albania are remnants of the country's former communist regime and can also be seen right on the shore of the lake. It's just so crazy to think that we've almost cycled to Greece. <laughs> it's just so crazy. I don't know if you think about it. And I mean, of course, this is only the beginning of our trip. We're still going to cycle so much more, but I don't know. It's just, it's just a crazy thought. Like you f usually you fly here on holiday and now you just recycle here, you know? I don't know. It feels so good. There it is, the border to Greece. Maybe first the border from Albania. Actually, no, that's a petrol station. All right, now this is the real border. <laughs> yeah, this looks much better. We are in Greece. Woo! <laughs> We're just so proud of us. <laughs> so cool, really. It's really, really awesome. <laughs> what a moment. Two years on, and we still not only look back with joy at this milestone, but also still feel proud of every new country we reach by bicycle. After now more than 35,000 kilometers, 25 countries and five continents, our perspective of scale may have changed over time, but our sense of achievement certainly has not. Yet no matter how well everything seems to go, sometimes things take a turn for the worse. We're just cruising down this valley in the north of Greece, just after the border now, and it's so nice. And it's so clean here at the moment. No trash on the side of the road. It's so nice. <laughs> So we just had the stupidest accident ever. I don't know, I looked to the side for one second and then I touched Toby's bike and then we couldn't hold our bikes anymore and fell. And yeah, it, my, my leg is a bit open now. And it's just so stupid. I'm so angry at myself right now. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, no, it was just a small, small. The bike problem, okay. It's so nice. He's just waiting for us every few hundred meters. Our warm shower host and even came towards us to see if we needed help because we rode him will be a little bit later because we had an accident. And it's just so nice of him. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Thank you. So, hmm? Tobias. Yeah. Luisa. <laughs> Blessing in disguise, our warm showers host Harris turned out to be a paramedic and was able to properly take care of my injured leg. Luckily, nothing major happened, and until this day, this accident remains the worst we've had on the whole journey. We ended up taking the next days very easy as we slowly made our way through northern Greece towards the Aegean Sea. Having enjoyed the summer in southern Europe the past weeks, for the first time we now noticed an approaching change of the season. It's so cold this morning that we're actually putting on some thicker gloves and socks <laughs> in the sandals, nice. <laughs> but it actually helps because it's freezing. And I don't know, you can't really tell, but I think we're at like almost uh, 400, uh, 750 or 700 meters altitude, um, which is yeah, obviously makes it a lot colder as well. Oh. So the knee does hurt a bit while cycling, especially when I start again, because uh, yeah, it's like uh, because of the movement, the wound gets stretched and then squeezed and stretched and squeezed, and that's a bit painful. But uh, yeah, only in the beginning, and then it's okay. Ooh, and it's so cold this morning. From the university, we can treat you one. Have you tried these? No. They are cheese pies. Some kind of cheese pies. So, this woman, we're just cooking in this tiny little hut in this tiny, tiny village, and this woman just came from somewhere and just gave us two lemonades. <laughs> And asked like, can, can, can I give you tomatoes and stuff as well? has to carry a backpack now well actually since uh, this morning already we had to carry one just because we're getting so much food from everyone uh, so now I think in there are tomatoes and grapes and uh, some bread yeah. <laughs> all for free and we already had like a massive lunch now and yeah. we still have too much we, we keep getting more stuff every time we stop for lunch yeah. Especially tomatoes. <laughs> After cycling one last mountain pass up to 1,400 meters, we reached the Aegean Sea on Greece's eastern coast. Passing the famous Mount Olympus, we made our way south towards Athens to visit my dad living in the area. We stayed with him for over six weeks and enjoyed our time together 
as we explored some local highlights. One of the most fascinating places we visited during that time were the Meteora monasteries, located in the heart of the country. Perched upon up to 600 meter high rock pinnacles, these centuries old Eastern Orthodox monasteries make for a spectacular sight. End of October 2021, it was time to say our farewells though, as we continued our journey eastwards towards Turkey. But not before checking out a tip we got from a local. Well, this doesn't look like we can enter the springs here. <laughs> hmm. There are definitely other people here. Let's have a look. Wow, everything is like, it's like a ghost town. It's really creepy. Everything is super abandoned and worn down. It's really like a ghost town. And I hear water up ahead. I'm just gonna have a look. But man, this is pretty creepy. really smells like sulfur though. You can smell the natural springs. I wonder if this is already it here. Oh, okay, I think it's up ahead because there's some people there and it's actually steaming like crazy, which is cool. Yeah, it looks really cool. I mean, there's some people there, but not too many. Uh, and I think we can get here with the bikes as well. So uh, I'll go get Louisa. I think this should be really awesome actually. Kind of creepy here. <laughs> All those dogs and grease. So this has got to be the best tip we've ever gotten from a local. It's just so awesome and we're actually completely alone now. Well, that was very relaxing, but also uh, we're a bit tired now because it was just so warm and the system went down a bit. Just uh, stopping at a cafe to get some fresh water, and all of a sudden, <laughs> another cyclist couple shows up, and we talked a bit. And they're from Austria, so also speaking German. And uh, we're gonna camp together tonight, probably. <laughs> Spontaneously. Yeah. yeah, it's very cool. <laughs> Today will be our last day in Greece. I don't know, we have 20 kilometers, maybe a bit more to go to the Turkish border. And then we are out of the country. Yes, after more than two months, yeah. it's time for a new country. And, um, and we're not going alone because we met um, another yeah, cyclist couple, as we mentioned yesterday. Lucas and Malena. And yeah, it's going to be cool that we're going to be traveling together for yeah. A little bit, we'll see how long, yeah. but it's, yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay. It's just again such an awesome feeling to reach a new country by bike. And this time though, I think it's uh, it feels even more special because it's really it's really outside of Europe. Yeah. Well, of course, still on the continent, Europe, but not long. Yeah. Well, soon crossing to Asia by bike. Although not too eventful, we still really enjoyed our first day cycling in Turkey together with Marlene and Lukas, camping, cooking and sharing our passion for music. And soon enough, the time came to not only leave more familiar cultures, but also the actual European continent behind. The Republic of Turkey is a vast country located partly in Southeast Europe, but with the majority in West Asia. The area is thought to be one of the oldest permanently settled regions in the world, with civilization dating back as far as 50,000 years. So we just did the authentic thing and from the money we earned busking here in Chanakale. Hello. All right, my friend. Have a nice day. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we bought one and a half kilos of uh, every type of baklava they had in that store. And yeah, I think tonight we're gonna have a sugar shock. <laughs> Goodness. <laughs> All right, baklava party. And now my fingers are sticky already. So, with, <laughs> which one should we start? So the green the one looks great. These ones, well, we have eight of those, so okay. we have, it's like a soup. <laughs> we can start with these, do like the round trip and end with them. Right. Okay, okay. okay. I think now we need the, now yeah. we need the forks. Yeah, we need the forks. <laughs> it looks so sticky. Oh. Oh. Yeah. 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 Chanakale, where we are, are right now, to Izmir, because we were told that the course from Izmir down to Antalya is a lot nicer, so we thought with our limited time here in Turkey we'd cycle that part instead of the more northern part. So yeah, initially we wanted to take a ferry, but there is no ferry, so now we have to see if we can find a bus that takes all the bicycles and so on. Yeah. So it's a bit okay, uh, yeah, proving to be pretty difficult. Okay, so, yeah. Now we're going, <laughs> they're going to the tourist office because the bus office, they don't speak well enough English or something. It's already almost dark now, as you can see. Uh, we ended up camping in the park right next to the bus ticket office and we're gonna be there tomorrow at six in the morning and um, then just check if the bus really can fit four bikes because one bus is supposed to go at 6.30 and they told us it would be empty and able to carry four bikes but we'll see in the morning. Alright, we're now waiting for the bus to come and it's freezing. So cold. <laughs> so cold. <laughs> Having taken the bus to Izmir, we soon left the urban centers behind and immersed ourselves in the countryside. For three weeks, we explored Turkey's southwestern coast together with Malena and Lukas, spending the now colder evenings by the fire, trying the local food and drinking lots of chai. One of our last nights together, we even set ourselves the challenge of making pizza on our camping stoves. 
However, once again, the moment of farewell came in no time, when we parted ways in Antalya. While Malena and Lukas would continue eastwards, we took a bus up to Istanbul to prepare for our onward journey there. Our remaining week in Istanbul gave us enough time to not only dismantle and pack our bikes, ready for our upcoming flight to the US, but also explore the many captivating facets of this transcontinental metropolis. Looking back now, we really couldn't have wished for a better start to our bicycle journey around the world. Even during these first five months and almost 5,000 kilometers, we already experienced so much and met so many great people that we simply cannot remember it all anymore, let alone retell it in a film. Nevertheless, making this film more than two years after cycling to Turkey the process was a real trip down memory lane for us. While on the one hand, the beginning of our journey seems so far away, on the other, it may as well have all been yesterday. And it is still as much an abstract thought today as it was back then to think that we are actually cycling around the world. <laughs> 